Hi everyone, my name is Nitin and welcome back to PSED Science where I'll be going through the water cycle important questions today. And I do hope you have watched my previous video on water cycle and the heat energy because these two videos will actually help you to understand what I'm going to teach today. Okay, so now let's get started. Okay. For the first segment of this video, I am going to go through the model of the water cycle and ask questions based on it, okay? Okay, model of the water cycle. So this is the model of the water cycle over here. Let's label the parts. So this over here is a heat source. So this is the lamp, okay? So let me just write down lamp. And this actually acts as the sun in the water cycle, okay? And then over here, we have some ice cubes. We have some ice cubes over here. And this over here is a saucer. And the ice cubes and the saucer together act as the sky, okay? And there's some hot water over here. This acts as the water body, okay? And then all of this is inside a container. Okay? So, now that we have labeled all the parts, let's take a look at one of these questions. Okay, so the question is, what is the purpose of the saucer? Okay. So like any normal water cycle, right? The, the water over here is already hot. So uh, we don't need hot water over here actually. We do not need hot water. We can just say normal water, okay? So this water over here actually gains heat from the heat source. If it's a uh, hot water, we do not need a heat source, right? So it gains heat from the heat source evaporates, condenses over here because it's a cooler surface, forms tiny water droplets and then drifts back down as uh, rain, so-called rain and uh, the cycle repeats itself again, okay? So this is what happens. So what is the purpose of the saucer? So the saucer actually allows the warmer water vapor that comes into contact with it to lose heat to the saucer and condense to form water droplets. So basically, this acts as the sky, right? So uh, we can see that the saucer acts as the sky uh, in analogy terms, okay? But this is how we are supposed to answer the question. Allows warmer water vapor to come into contact with it to lose heat and condense to form water droplets, okay? Now let's move on to the second question based on the model of water cycle. Okay, for the second question, we have explain the formation of water droplets on the saucer. So basically, we need to state the condensation tablet answer. So the water gains heat from the lamp to evaporate and form water vapor. The warmer water vapor then rises and comes into contact with the cooler underside of the saucer, loses heat to it and condenses to form tiny water droplets. Okay, I do hope you have remembered the, this uh, condensation template answer from the heat energy video. Okay, so I think you understand that, uh, understand this if you have watched the heat energy video. If not, let me just explain it again. So first you state that the water gains heat from the lamp. So you need to state where it gains heat from. If not, they will penalize marks, of course, to evaporate. Okay, so this is basically the HPC structure again. So uh, water gains heat. So this is a H gain heat or lose heat from the lamp to evaporate P the process and form tiny water droplets change in state. Okay, the warmer water vapor then rises and comes into contact with the cooler underside of the saucer. Next loses heat to it, H again, and condenses to form tiny water droplets. H, 
and then this is P, and then this is C. Okay, so H, P, and then C. Okay, so this is how you are supposed to answer. You have to memorize this answer by heart, okay, because this is applied in many, many answers, not just for water cycle, but also in heat energy, okay? So now, let's move on to the next question. Okay, so for the next question, we have, what is the purpose of the ice cubes? Okay, the saucer loses heat to the ice cubes and becomes cooler. Okay, without the ice cubes, right, there's, there's, there will be no condensation because the saucer and the water will actually be at the same temperature. So there is no temperature difference and thus the water doesn't condense on the saucer. So this ice cubes, right, actually makes the saucer cooler so that there's a, a larger temperature difference so that it can lose heat to it, okay? So the saucer loses heat to the ice cubes and becomes cooler. This allows the warmer water vapor that comes into contact with the saucer to lose heat faster to the cooler underside of the saucer and condense faster to form more water droplets. Okay, uh, in this case, why we say faster is because sometimes the saucer might actually be at a, a cooler temperature than the water because uh, the saucer could be made out of metal, right? So the metal is a better conductor of heat, so it might be cooler. So, uh, but what we are, we are trying to say here is that it will take a slower time to condense than uh, when you put ice cubes on top of it. Okay? So, I hope you understand that. Now, let's move on. Okay, so for the next question, question 4, we are going to talk about what happens when I replace the hot water with cold water. So, imagine the water over here is hot, okay? Hot water. I replace it with cold water. What happens? Okay, so basically the answer is there will not be any water droplets observed on the underside of the saucer because both of them are already cool, right? And there's like no temperature difference. That's why. Instead, the water droplets will be observed on the cooler surface of the beaker. So what that means is that the water droplets will be observed over here on the cooler surface. So this is the cooler surface. Okay? And then we need to explain this as well. Most students, right, they, they just un write until here or they might not even write will be observed on the cooler side of the beaker. Okay? That's why they lose marks. And after they write this, right, this the examiner still doesn't give the marks. You need to explain it. So we need to use the cold water concept. The warmer water vapor from the surrounding air comes into contact with the cooler outer surface of the beaker, loses heat to it, and condenses to form water droplets. Okay? So this is how you're supposed to explain it. Okay? So I hope you understand what happens when we replace hot water with cool water. Okay? Now let's move on. Okay. For the second segment of this video, I'm going to go through the sloping plastic sheet question. Okay? So the sloping plastic sheet question, we have, so this is the image over here. So that's the sun. Okay, so this is seawater. This is the beaker over here. There's a sloping plastic sheet and there's a container. Okay, let's take a look at the question, right? Okay, what should we do to allow more water to be collected into the cup. Okay, how does water even be collected into this cup? So basically this water, the water at this part over here where I'm colouring, actually gains it from the sun to evaporate, okay? Then it forms tiny water droplets, right? Over here. And then these water droplets actually drip down over here. It slides into the centre. And then when the water droplets actually combine, it forms a larger water droplet and it will be too heavy and it will drop down into this opening over here just like the model of a water cycle okay so this is what happens in a real water cycle right the the tiny water droplets actually combine like i said in my previous video so 
What should we do to allow more water to be collected into the cup? Okay, now we need to talk about the heat energy. We have talked about the three factors affecting the rate of evaporation of water. So first, we can increase the temperature of the water by placing a flame under the water in the beaker. Or we can decrease the size of the cup. So this cup over here, where the opening is, we can decrease the size so that there's a larger exposed surface over here. Larger exposed surface area over here, this part over here, from this point to this point and from this point to this point. So when there is a larger exposed surface area, we all know that the water in the beaker will gain heat faster and evaporate faster. So this, uh, this is what we can do. Okay, now let's move on. Before that, we need to say we must use the hot water concept. So the water in the beaker will gain heat faster from the flame to evaporate faster and form more water vapor. So this is what we need to say for number one. And then for number two, we need to say the warmer water vapor then rises and comes into contact with the underside of the plastic sheet, loses heat to it and condenses to form more water droplets which are collected in the cup. So this is the... Uh, the next sentence for this evaporation part over here for number two. Okay? So every time you give a claim, you need to uh, explain. Okay? Now let's uh, move on. Okay, so this is the second question. So on this second question, right, they're asking what is the purpose of the sloping plastic sheet? Like I said, the plastic sheet over here so it condenses to form water droplets right and then you actually slide down to the center over here and then each of them you form water droplets in the middle right and then you actually drip down so this is the purpose and another purpose is for it to be condensed on okay now let's take a look at the answer to allow water droplets to be formed on it, to slide down to the middle of the plastic sheet and drip into the cup to be collected. Okay? So, it actually uses some of our common sense to answer this question. Okay? So, please do take note that this type of questions will appear in PSLE. Okay? With that, I hope you have understood my explanation for these questions. And thank you and goodbye. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!